The title of this presentation is Estimating Liquidity Risk from High Frequency Tick Data. My name is Bruce Uponi. First of all, what is liquidity? In simple financial parlance, we refer to liquidity as the availability of cash or money to meet current financial need. Think about being cash trapped, having money in the bank but no cash to spend now. Want to buy a drink? Cost ten dollars. All you've got is eight dollars in your in cash but unfortunately forgot your wallet with your debit or credit card at home. This makes it impossible to buy your drink because you are short of two dollars. Now we look at a case if you were a trader so you de you dealt with poultry eggs. This was you as a buyer interested in buying five crates of egg at $150 each. Your wallet is buoyant enough you got $765. And here comes seller one who says, hello, I've got three crates at $152. This happens to be the best price in the market. And you say, fine, I will buy them. You bought three crates at $456. And here comes seller two who says, yeah, I've got four crates at $160. This happens to be the next best price you can get in the market. So because you need two more crates, you enter into this deal and says all right fine i'll get two more crates from you but you have 309 dollars left in your wallet and to pay for this you need about 320 dollars so if you paid for this 320 dollars all you pay in summation will be 776 dollars but if seller one had five crates what you will be paying what you'll be paying will have been $760. And the difference between the these two prices is $16. And this is what we refer to as the liquidation cost because it is the cost for not getting your five crates of egg at the best market price. And this is also known as the liquidity risk. And we define liquidity risk as the risk of buying or selling an asset above or below the actual market price of the asset at any given time. So if you were buying an asset above the actual market price, you face a potential liquidity risk. And if you were selling below the actual market price, you face similar liquidity risk. If a third buyer or a third person came to buy from you, they will be affected by the fact that you've got your five crates of eggs at two different prices. And so the average will be a new price, let's say 156. And so this price will be the minimum price you would accept from any buyer because of the liquidity risk premium you've incurred. So looking at the more organized markets such as the London Stock Exchange, we look at many buyers and many sellers. And buyers buy by making bid orders, sellers sell by making ask orders. Roles, however, can reverse in this market where buyers can become sellers and sellers can become buyers. And these orders placed by both participants in the market are actually fed into a common platform known as the order book. The order book has the bid side of the market in red and the ask side of the market in blue. And so we look, in, we look into the order book to come up with some facts such as the best bid and the best ask which are actually the best prices from both sides and so from the bid side moving downwards we see that the prices are in a decreasing order having the highest bid price at the top and in the ask side we have the prices in an increasing order have the best or the lowest price at the top these two prices the ask and the bid price we can infer something or the fact known as spread, the spread dimension of the other book, which is actually the difference between the ask and the bid. In this case, it's about $11. We also can infer the depth of the market from the other book, <coughs> where we see the volume with respect to price, how accumulated in the other book really are the orders. From the order book we can actually derive 
the marginal supply and demand curve like this which shows us the bid and ask spread and the market depth now moving across to or towards the y-axis we see a convergence and which shows that actually these prices have a, almost a meeting point as prices from the ask side decreases and prices from the bid side increases a more linearized form of the marginal supply demand curve is this showing the ask and the bid now to estimate liquidity risk we employ the idea of Carlo Asebi and Giacomo Scandolo in their formalism for liquidity risk which was titled liquidity risk and coherent risk measures in 2008 this paper came up with the idea employed the idea rather of mark to market which is a financial of I financial idea of valuing the worth of a portfolio or an asset with prevalent market prices and in this case we have the order book two extremes of the mark to market idea has the liquidation mark to market which will onward refer to as lp and uppermost mark to market which will refer to onwards as up lp refers to the value of a portfolio valuing the portfolio with all available prices in the market and up is valuing the portfolio with only the best market prices that is the topmost market prices and liquidation cost is what we refer to as u minus l the difference basically and the properties for l u and c are given thus in a collection of portfolios l is concave u is equally concave y c is convex so using real market data final results for l u and c are valid if they satisfy these properties and so these are the diagrammatic representation for l which is concave u which is equally concave but not properly concave and c which is convex but not totally convex and liquidation uh, liquidity risk um, estimation continued we look at an example with a portfolio with 1000 watt of cash and 4000 watt of stock we try to mark to market 3000 watt of this stock to a buying position and 1000 watt of this stock to a selling position and so the values for L is this and U is equal to this and the difference is this now this should have been the liquidation cost for this example so using historical data from the London Stock Exchange 2nd June 2008 we use two stocks and 10 different portfolios of AZ and MBATS in this dimension and also the cash we consider in this scenario is fifty thousand dollars we estimate L U and C for two scenarios the first scenario is this and the second scenario is this now we look at the MSDC for both stocks for some vital observations and what we see for the AZN stock at different timestamps is this the spread is tight at 830 much more tighter at 1230 but quite loose at 430 similarly for the bat stock the spread is tight at 830 much tighter at 1230 but quite loose at 430 now this influences the results we got when computing C for all scenarios you see the zero liquidation cost for the AZN stock at 1230 because the spread was very tight and for the bat stock we see that the computation for C had a higher liquidation cost and so looking at 10 possible quantities at each for 1230 this is what we see graphically for the bat and AZN stock shorting bats and long in AZN what we have is this that shows actually the marginal supply demand curve actually exemplifies this um, information represented in the graph as we can see that the first four stocks were parallel to the y to the x-axis at the origin this was not the case at 430 as what we can see is this also 
we look at 10 by 10 possible quantities for both stocks and as we can see because the spread is quite tighter at 12.30 we see the almost no liquidation cost at 12.30 following 10 by 10 combination of both stocks and so we also look at such combination at 4.30 and see that there's a higher liquidation cost at where the previous um, calculation we had zero or no liquidation costs now the diagram the graph for C at 12.30 shows a very convex half convex um, graph for C at 12.30 very convex because the spread at 12.30 is very tight but if we look at the graph at 4.30 the graph for C shows a loosely convex graph and also we look at the graph for L at the same time which is concave but not very concaved and also the graph for U at 1230 which is concave but not very concave overall we are able to come to the conclusion and the observation that the results for L, U and C are consistent with the properties given by Sevian Scandalous Formalism and so the two facts stylized by the MSDC which are exemplified in the corresponding results obtained from C are 1. Liquidation cost increases with the volume of stock to be liquidated there is higher liquidation cost that is higher liquidity risk in liquidating large positions liquidity risk increases as the volume of stock or asset to liquidate increases secondly loser wide bid ask spread characterizes illiquid markets with impact on liquidation cost and so we mean the tighter closer or smaller the bid ask spread the less the liquidation cost for an asset or a portfolio thanks for listening bye